I uh, did this one too at the place with the other video, uh, but the recording wasn't so good. I was really nervous, but uh, I was going to read it again here. <clears throat> I think back to when I was a child, contemplating the decision between a fully synthetic wardrobe, which could keep me dry and warm and always hold its black and not easily wear thin, and one of only organic and hand-sewn things that, though more fragile and quick to stain, would theoretically be producible on demand and mended with increasing character. How trivial a decision when you're in the sixth grade, but how this paradigm has followed me, and now I see this duality between taking full advantage of our synthetic capitalist enterprise through which these very words are written, and abandoning the notion altogether in the literal anarchy of a feral existence. Truthfully, both are equally contrived. Why do I feel the need to only wait in the shallows able to touch the Mother Earth, paradoxically taking death by the hand to live what I dream a simpler life? Why not dive into this synthetic sea of what dreams our wicked species may fill? Because after this event horizon waves past us to the shores of yesterday, when our feet leave the ground lifted by it, nothing else can be predicted, because from here on out the change will be exponential. When we drift out, there will be chaos. A genetic study of our head lice and its closest ancestors, including gorilla lice, body lice, and crabs, revealed that human ancestors lost their hair. So the gorilla lice stayed with the gorilla and we got custody of the crabs. And then the body louse told us when we started wearing clothes, even before we left the first continent, stage one out of the seven we inhabit now. So you and I and everyone owe our mere existence to clothing because... Exposure to the cold is the leading cause of death for the homeless. And if anyone knows the struggle of our ancestors in the Ice Age, it would be the homeless. Something we all take for granted in a huge social enigma this fashion. Some are assaulted and murdered for what they wear, or they just die because they didn't have enough, or it's just class discrimination, you know? Our history is written in our genes. We don't mine for gold anymore, but we feel like a gold mine when we find the f perfect pair of jeans. And why shouldn't we? Fashion is art for clothing, music is art for the ears, pictures are art of the eyes, and sex is the art of touch. Food, of course, is the art of taste, and being human is just to bring art to everything. Art must needs be reproduced, or at the very least, imitated, because the most original art still inspires some common experience in viewers. And so it is that any fashion is art brought to necessity. Fashion can be a passion, but there are real social issues around clothing. Can we stop policing our brothers, others, and sisters, worrying about whether they're misses or misters? Can we make sure everyone has a warm place to sleep and food to eat? Because your clothes get dirty if you tend to sleep on the street. It doesn't matter what we wear, because the struggle for our species is over. But the struggle for humanity has only just begun.